So let's talk about entomopathogenic nematodes. These nematodes are used to control insects in cryptic environments, that is the soil or in galleries of trees, etc. Now we can produce these nematodes in large-scale liquid culture, so we can produce uh, cheap products to use them also in large-scale agriculture. However, we have a major problem. Uh, these nematodes have a short shelf life of only about six weeks and we have to store them at low temperature. So if the shelf life of these nematodes could be prolonged, uh, we would probably be able to approach also larger markets. And we could also possibly increase the efficacy of the nematodes so we could use a lower dose and like this also reduce the costs for the product and then again we can approach larger markets. So how are we going to do this? Our idea was to domesticate nematodes. It has been done with chicken and cows, why not with nematodes, right? Okay, so our aims in the Biocoms project were to prolong the lifespan of the nematodes and to increase their stress resistance as well and the virulence. And to improve uh, these traits, we were using traditional genetic techniques like crossbreeding and selection. So then we also wanted to identify certain genes which are involved with these traits and to identify gen genetic uh, sequences so we would be able to produce markers and with these markers improve and accelerate our success in the breeding program. So our approach was to first of all use a huge strain collection so to use the naturally occurring variability and first of all phenotype these uh, strain collections so we could see what the traits of these different uh, uh, strains were. And then in the next step we would then genetically uh, analyze the longevity and the virulence and stress resistance and then um, produce the markers and finally produce a strain which is gathering all the beneficial traits in one, which we would then obtain by breeding. And whether the breeding is successful, we could always follow up with these genetic markers. Uh, so we first of all phenotyped our, our strain collection. We then looked at the expression of the nematodes in response to stress, for example. And then we did a, genotype, a gene sequencing and genotyping by sequencing to find genetic differences in those which were, for example, more virulent and less virulent. And from these, we, we have uh, produced approximately 20,000 uh, genes. We have sequenced these genes and analyzed them. And we produced about 12 markers, which we can now use to follow up the success of our breeding program. Finally, we were working in a group with uh, the Volcani Center and also with the University of the Azores in the middle of the Atlantic. And they were working on virulence and the Volcani Center in Israel was working on stress tolerance like tolerance to heat and desiccation. And they found different expression of genes. Some of the genes were upregulated in response and some were downregulated. And we tried to find out and analyze these genes. In the virulence, we also could identify four different genes and uh, found some strains which were high virulent and th then they were upregulated. And when the strains were low in virulence, they were downregulated. So like this, we had an indication on uh, the potential of these different nematode strains. Uh, this is the result of a screening also on, we evaluated the LC50, which is the lethal dose, which kills 50% of the population. And that is our indication for the virulence, for example. Now the final step, of course, was to take uh, these uh, strains, which we consider to be very good, and compare them to the com commercial strain, which we have in the market already, and then see how they perform in semi-field tests, but also outside in the field. And we found out that the new strain was higher in stress tolerance, was better in field persistence, was reasonably in semi-field tests, but very good in outside in the field in under commercial conditions. The efficacy was higher in the laboratory and also the storage stability was higher because we prolonged the life cycle of these nematodes. 
So the impact of this biocontrol project was uh, quite significant for us as a company. It uh, provided us with improved nematode products. Um, we combined basic and applied research to reach our goal uh, in development of the improved strain. And uh, we also identified the potential of many wild type strains. So we will also be able in the future to use this genetic information to also improve other beneficial traits. So uh, I think it has a benefit for our company, but also for the farmer to use our products, for example, also about against uh, the Western corn rootworm in, in corn in the future, where we have to compete with uh, low-cost uh, uh, insecticides, but with decreasing the uh, amount of nematodes we can use and prolonging their life, life in, in the soil, their persistence in the soil, we're now able to offer these nematode-based products at a lower cost and make them more interesting for farmers also. So we, on the long term, we will be able to substitute some of the agro agrochemicals. Well, and uh, the, what will be the next steps? Uh, we will have to upscale the production of new strains, and then we will also try to protect our intellectual property, of course, and uh, we will try to produce some patents. Uh, we will then probably release the new products within the next two years, and we will certainly continue this uh, research and uh, to optimize also other beneficial traits and finally, we can implement a high throughput breeding platform in our companies to further domesticate these nematodes for the benefit of our company, but also for the farmers. And I thank the European Union for supporting us. Mm -hmm.